take a look at this video it looks pretty awesome right looks very realistic looks very immersive well it's generated by ai most of the modern ai generated videos come from a technology which is called as stable diffusion why is it called diffusion well because we start out from an image which looks like random noise and then it gets better and better and better bunch of these images are stacked together and then the ai gives you an awesome video like you have seen here in icml 2024 which is one of the best conferences in machine learning the paper which was selected for the best paper award was termed as video poet what these people basically said was that hey stable diffusion is good but why don't we use large language models themselves for generating ai based videos and what if we show you that such an approach is better than stable diffusion then why do we even need diffusion that's their whole idea they won the best paper award for this idea and they have also released a beautiful website called video poet and here you can see they have named it as a large language model for zero shot video generation look at the awesome ai based videos which they have created these videos are not based on stable diffusion but they are from the same place where the chat gpt generated text comes from they are generated through large language models that's awesome right in this video we'll break down how this paper actually works what's the technology which they have developed so that you will develop an understanding in a very simplified and easy manner so let's get started with this video my name is dr raj dandekar i graduated with a phd from machine learning from mit in 2022 and since then it's my mission to make these ai videos so that ai becomes accessible to all Here's the paper called Video Poet, which was the best paper award at ICML 2024. It's a 20-page paper, but it's brilliantly written, and I really had a fun time reading this paper. First, let me start by one of the best modern text-to-video generator AI softwares or AI companies, and that's called Runway ML. What I've done here is I've given my photo here, and I've asked Runway to move my head from left to right. Here is what it does. Does not really look like me, but okay, that's pretty cool. Here's a image of or video of a person who kind of looks like me, and the image moves from or the video moves from left to right. Awesome. Now, making videos like this requires us to rely on a technology which is called as stable diffusion. The way this technology works is that first you break down the video into a chunk of images and then you process each image the way each image is processed is that first you have a prompt let's say uh, move head from left to right that prompt is then applied on individual images when it's applied to an image first an image representation is clear is generated which looks like random noise as you can see here and slowly that random noise gets better and better and better and it starts looking like the image on the right so on the right hand side look at this animation of this rabbit it starts from a random noise and then it gets better and better and better this transformation from randomness to something more refined and something more uniform vaguely looks like the diffusion process which happens when chemicals are introduced in a fluid that's why it's called as stable diffusion most of the modern ai generated videos based are based on the stable diffusion technology even the runway videos like these are based on stable diffusion what these people from the video poet paper essentially ask the question is that can we use large language models for video generation why do we have to rely on stable diffusion let's dig into that further when we look at large language models there is a specific way in which gpt models are constructed there is a process which is called as pre-training and then there is a process which is called as fine tuning so there is a big corpus of data which is let's say internet text books media research articles etc 
that is broken down into tokens which are you can think of them as individual words for now then we train a large language model on these tokens so that we can predict the next word and this is trained on billions of data just to give you context gpt3 took 4.6 million dollars to train these pre-trained models are called as foundational models and then we do fine tuning so let's say if you are a production level company and if you want better performance you can fine tune the pre-trained llm on your specific data sets so this is the usual sequence of training an llm in the pre-training stage it's usually called auto regressive method since it's also an unsupervised learning the sentence itself the structure of the sentence itself is exploited to construct the training data and the next word is used as testing and then the next word which is predicted in one iteration is used in the training in the next iteration that's why it's called auto regressive and it's also unsupervised so these are the usual steps which are involved in the training of large language models and the architecture itself looks something like this so here i have a schematic for the gpt architecture you have a sample text let's say the sample text is this is an example of how llm can dash this sample text is converted into uh, tokens these tokens are fed to the decoder the decoder generates the output text and it predicts the next word this is an example of how llm can perform so it's a decoder only architecture unlike transformers it does not have an encoder now what the authors of video poets say is that what if we use the exact same methodology and apply it to images video and audio so let's say instead of incomplete text here we have incomplete images video and audio and then we follow the same thing we pass them through the pre-processing steps which is tokenization then we have a decoder and let's see the final output which is generated that's all which is done in this paper at a very fundamental level you take images video and audio you break it down into individual tokens you pass these tokens to a decoder and then you have the final output which is the image video or the audio it's very very simple and it exactly follows what is done in training large language models such as the gpt but the real question you need to ask yourself is how do i convert these different modalities into tokens because if you have a huge paragraph of data like large language models used we can think of tokens as individual words right there is some sort of an understanding but let's say if you take a video for example how do you convert it into tokens for image it's pretty easy to think about it right you just take an image it's broken down into pixel representation and maybe those are tokens what about is this actually true and what about the tokenization for video and audio so let's see further so let's take this this video um, and let's say we want to tokenize this video the way it's done is that first this video is broken down into chunk of images each image is passed through a convolutional neural network the convolutional neural network generates a feature map for each image and then that feature map is essentially broken down into tokens and then this same thing is done for every image and that's why that's how you have the tokenized representation for a video now the timestamp information is also encoded in this tokenization you should know which frame comes after which frame and which frame comes before which frame this is how images and videos are encoded for audio there is a different method let's say if you have an audio sample which looks like this what happens is that Google has developed this audio encoder called sound stream. So you pass this audio sample through the sound stream, sound stream, a neural network downgrades it to a lower dimensional space. And from there we get the tokens uh, of the encoded audio. So through methods like sound stream and uh, the method which I just showed you for the video, what we can do is that we can actually convert image video and audio all into tokens and then once they are converted into tokens they are passed into the decoder and then exactly the same steps are followed like which are followed for the gpt architecture it's a very simple yet brilliant idea which these folks have implemented and when i checked out the videos which they have it's truly awesome look at some of these videos these are purely done from large language models the stable diffusion is not used over here beautiful extremely real videos and we can even do styling with videos we can do video to audio 
because the model is not restricted to the modality literally it's just a token based model so we can do video to audio we can also do styling of Im styling of images into different editing sequences etc by the way this tokenization of the video which i showed you is called as uh, is called as magwit v2 video tokenizer and the audio tokenizer is called as soundstream this is the schematic which they have on their paper itself here you can see we can do text to video we can do image to video video to audio so many things and the main core is that all the input modalities are broken down into individual tokens and then the decoder architecture is followed which is the same architecture used in large language models take a look at the amount of data which is being used in this paper so as you can see the training is done on 1 billion image text pairs and 270 million videos imagine the amount of compute power and gpu access this would have taken so the total number of tokens used is around 2 trillion across all the modalities since we convert videos and images also into tokens the number of tokens really increase by a huge amount there are 2 trillion tokens which are used across all modalities as you can see for modern llm papers the data size and the data set keeps on increasing and increasing and increasing what these authors actually do towards the end of the paper is that they ask raters to rate their videos among five dimensions the dimension of text fidelity which video follows the text prompt most faithfully then video quality motion interestingness motion realism and temporal consistency and based on these five metrics they ask readers or watchers to also evaluate their method with other ai video generators and here's what they say towards the end we observe that video poet is competitive with state-of-the-art video diffusion models despite taking a dramatically different approach i think this is one of the most important conclusions from this paper which has got them the best paper award so here are some other cool things which can be done using video poet you can generate a 10 second long video such as this you can invert, you can even create animations from historical photos and from paintings as has been shown here uh, also you can create animations from still image as you can see here you can do cool things like creating a stylized video such as an oil painting of a snowman with a red hat opening their mouth to yawn this is amazing right uh, finally, the paper ends with ethical considerations, which is very important and I really like this aspect of the paper. The authors say that the paper is introducing research aimed at advancing the field of video generation to enhance human creativity. However, several ethical concerns emerge, including the potential use for mis potential for misuse and ethical considerations. Misuse may entail the creation of deceptive and harmful content such as misinformation or deep fakes. This is extremely important as AI technology becomes better and better and better. There is the other side of the coin, the dark side. And uh, for all such impactful papers, it's very important to mention what's the best way to, to ethically use them. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks to all for watching. I'll be sharing this link. Please explore. I don't think it's been available to the public yet for creating prompts but it's an awesome paper and if you want me to go into technical details of this paper please let me know and i'll do that in subsequent videos thanks a lot everyone and i'll see you in the next videos